Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The rate of oxygen reach blood flow. That's because the oxygen here in this case, since there is no mixing up, so the rate at which the oxygenated blood flows, that is also higher. So this was a brief introduction about the circulatory system in different animals. So now we will specifically talk about the human circulatory system. So we will talk about the different types of blood vessels, their properties and structure and then we will look at the process of circulation in human beings. So let us first talk about the blood vessels. So now we will talk about the tube-like structures which actually help to carry blood. That is the blood vessels. Now there are many different types of blood vessels which are found in the human circulatory system. So some of the important ones are arteries, veins and capillaries. So we are going to discuss about each of them in detail. Arteries, veins and capillaries that what do each of them carry and how do they look like. So let us start our discussion with arteries. So they carry blood from heart to different parts of the body. Now, the speciality of arteries is that they have very thick walls. So they can carry blood under very high pressure. Now, when the blood flows out of the heart to different body parts, the blood flows out with a great pressure. So they can manage this great pressure because of their thick walls. So if you remember the... Uh, cycle or the circulation process of human heart what did we see it had four chambers right right auricle left auricle right ventricle and left ventricle and how was the blood uh, being circulated so if this was the lungs and if this is your body body means the different tissues of the body then the oxygenated blood from the lungs comes into the left auricle, from left auricle it goes into the left ventricle, from left ventricle it goes to different parts of the body. Again from body the deoxygenated blood comes to the right auricle, from right auricle it comes to right ventricle, from right ventricle it goes back to the lungs. So this is the process of double circulation in case of human beings. Now arteries carry blood from heart to different body parts that means from heart to different body parts that is from left ventricle to the body. So this is carried by the arteries. Right? Now these arteries have very thick walls and they always carry only oxygenated blood. So they never carry deoxygenated blood. So if you see this blood is nothing but oxygenated blood only. And also remember that they have thick walls and this is extremely important because had they been not having thick walls in that case they could have not been able to manage such high pressure. That is what happens right because when the blood comes out with a very high pressure when they reach the capillaries the walls of the capillaries are very thin and that is why the blood tends to leak out. But in case of arteries since the walls are very thick so that they can manage the blood flowing through it under very high pressure. They have thick elastic walls. So this characteristic of wall of the arteries also make them very useful. One exception to this is the pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery is the only artery that carry deoxygenated blood. So this is the only artery. All other arteries carry oxygenated blood. So here, which where do we have pulmonary artery? So this deoxygenated blood is carried by pulmonary artery. That is carrying the blood, carrying the oxygenated blood from ventricles to the lungs. That is done by pulmonary artery. So that is the only exception. So this is all. This also follows this thing because it carries blood from heart to different body parts. So heart is right ventricle is heart. Other body parts is anything other than the heart. So it is carrying from heart to lungs but this is deoxygenated blood. So please remember that pulmonary artery is the only artery which carries deoxygenated blood. The next would be the veins. Now veins carry blood from different body parts to heart. So it is just the opposite to that of 
so it is just the other way that as when compared to arteries now they carry deoxygenated blood so again let us quickly see where do they play a role so this was the heart with the four chambers right auricle left auricle right ventricle and left ventricle this was the lungs and this was the body so this used to be the oxygenated blood and then this oxygenated blood used to flow to different parts of the body and this used to be the deoxygenated blood and then it used to flow back to the lungs right okay okay i think i made it incorrect okay this is not there and again this is not there okay so from right ventricle it used to go to the lungs and from left ventricle it used to go to the body okay so now here in this case what happens with the veins they are going to carry the deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body to the heart so this is going to be carried by the veins because this is deoxygenated blood from body to the heart so just the opposite to that of arteries and they always carry deoxygenated blood however there is an exception again and the exception is pulmonary vein which carries oxygenated blood and that is this one so it carries by oxygenated blood from lungs to the heart so they have thin less elastic walls that is because when the blood flows from different parts of the body towards the heart they do not really flow under very high pressure so it is quite okay even if the blood vessels or the veins have thin walls and that is why they have thin walls valves are also present so that the back flow of blood uh, blood can be regulated so valve you can consider them as something which regulates or controls the flow of a fluid especially to prevent the back flow of fluid so here in this case since it is deoxygenated blood so it has a lot of carbon dioxide which needs to be thrown out of the body so we do not want this deoxygenated blood to flow in the backward direction that is to flow back into different body tissues so in order to prevent that valves are present so valves are very similar to doors so you can actually regulate the entry and exit of people through door for example if you don't want somebody to enter your house you will keep your door closed you will not open it if you want somebody to enter your house then you will open the door so doors help to regulate the entry and exit of people similarly here valves regulate the flow of the blood through the veins so exception to the veins is the pulmonary vein as i discussed they carry oxygenated blood from lungs to the left auricle and heart okay so this was about the veins and now the third blood vessel that is capillaries so capillaries are the thinnest blood vessels they are extremely thin now now what happens is that the arteries which carry the oxygenated blood they divide further to form finer branches called arterioles which in turn divide further into very very fine branches called capillaries and these capillaries then again join together to form a comparatively a little thicker venules which in turn form the veins and these veins later form the vena cava so here you can see the picture this is how it looks like so this is the artery which carries the oxygenated blood the arteries divide or branch into further thinner branches known as arterioles so each of these branches are arterioles these branches divide further to form even thinner structures called capillaries so if you see here these are the capillaries and these capillaries again join back to form thicker tube like structures called venules and these venules join together to form a vein and several veins together again join to form something called vena cava so this is how the branching take place and the capillaries play the most important role the capillaries are the ones which have the thinnest walls therefore gaseous ga exchange of gases nutrients or excretory products everything become very easy across the capillary wall because the walls are very thin so extremely thin walls of the capillaries are going to be very useful and it is because of this thin walls of capillaries that uh, the concept of lymph also comes into picture as i said some of the blood loses some of its plasma and 
small proteins into the interstitial spaces. This leakage is possible because of the thin walls of capillaries. So that means capillaries are the finer blood vessels. I mean the finest blood vessels you can say. Now let us quickly discuss the dis difference between arteries and veins. So we have covered all the blood vessels. So let us quickly look at the distinction. Now arteries, they carry oxygenated blood. So they carry blood from heart to body. Whereas veins, they carry deoxygenated blood from body to heart. They both have an exception in arteries. Pulmonary artery is the only one which carries deoxygenated blood. Similarly, in case of veins, pulmonary vein is the only one which carries oxygenated blood. In arteries, blood flows with high pressure and that is made possible due to thick elastic walls of the arteries. Whereas in case of veins, blood flows with relatively lower pressure and that is why they have thin elastic walls. In arteries, there are no valves present because it is all oxygenated blood. So not major, no major harm will be caused even if there is some backflow. But in case of veins, veins, valves are a must because they carry deoxygenated blood which has a lot of carbon dioxide which needs to be thrown out of the body. So if there is a backflow of the deoxygenated blood, it, the carbon dioxide will unnecessarily again reach, or again reach the different tissue cells of the body and that is not going to be very much beneficial. So these are some of the differences between arteries and veins. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.